All right, welcome back to the Nightly Sports Call. Rich Wallace, Gene Call. You're sitting right next to me, and we're talking about the Steelers right now. Marquise Pouncey came out very outspoken about uh, what happened last Sunday and said there, there was no disrespect, and uh, they're going to go out and show fans their support for the anthem and the flag in the country and the military this week, 100% participation. Uh, you know, I thought they should have done it last week too, but, you know, uh, oh well. But they're going to do it this game. I, I don't know what they're going to do, if they're going to plan something, but I would expect them to be on the field. Well, I expect them to do what Marquise Pouncey said they would do. However, that means somebody changed their minds. Because uh, had it been unanimous prior to last week's game, there had been no incident at all. Some Steelers definitely wanted to either kneel or sit it out. And that's what led to the whole thing. And now it seems like that, that maybe it came from above. Like, hey, this is what we're doing. Um, well, prior to last week, uh, the Steelers had always had 100% participation as far as standing for the anthem. It wasn't until Donald Trump said that yeah. stuff that some guys on the team said, you know what, we're not, you know, we're not doing this. Well, a big game for the Steelers, and uh, hopefully the focus shifts towards the, the Ravens this week. Um, you know, in Baltimore, haven't been too good. Losers of four straight in mm -hmm. Baltimore. Right. Um, I think they're going to lose again. I think it's going to be five straight. Uh, a couple absences at practice today. Mitchell, um, Jesse James. Uh, two did practice, which is good news. They could have really used him last week in Chicago. And T.J. Watt also practiced. So uh, arrows are pointing up, Gene, for both those guys, and they need both those guys. Yeah, I expect those two guys to play. Uh, but the Steelers have had good depth along the defensive line. But Watt is, was off to such a great start, and he looks like he's going to be a great player. Be glad, I'm glad to see him back. All right, uh, let's go out to the phone lines. We're going to go out to Davis. Out in Thanks, Finnegan. gentlemen. How, how are you tonight? Good. Thanks for calling, Davis. Uh, how do you see this game on Sunday? And would you agree with me that they need to give uh, Bell the ball this week more than the, the, these past weeks to beat the Ravens? Thank you. You know, thanks a lot for your call. They gave, the, they gave Bell the, uh, a ton of chances uh, two weeks ago against Minnesota. Um, I just think the game plan, you know, how the game unfolded really dictates whether you run or you throw the ball. But uh, they still seem really out of sync, Gene. Um, Bell, Ben, and the offense. Yeah, I mean, I agree with the caller. I think they have to get uh, – they really have to get Bell going. I mean, he doesn't go. Nothing goes, really. I mean, you saw what happened at New England in, in the uh, championship game. Once Bell was gone, that was the end of the Steelers' offense. And until he gets going, you, they won't look uh, like themselves. At what point do you use Connor maybe a little bit more? I'm not saying significantly more, but maybe give him 10 carries. Uh, if you get to that point, you'll be in trouble because that means uh, Le'Veon Bell, for whatever reason, is either injured or is failing. Uh, and nothing against James Conner. I mean, I, I like the guy, but, uh, you know, that's not a situation the Steelers want to be in. And he's not Le'Veon Bell, that is for sure. Let's go out right. to Big Will in Monroeville. How you doing, Big Will? Hey, gentlemen. How are you this evening? Good. Thanks Good. for calling. Good. Thank you very much for taking my call, as always. Um, really enjoy the show. I have a question about the Pirates and the rotation for next year. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think they will keep George Contos in the bullpen or maybe try him out as a starter in uh, camp? Who, who did you? I, I, George Contos. George okay. Contos. Yo, Contos, okay. All right. Yes, sir. Thanks. What do you think? Um, I think he's ticketed for the bullpen. However, a lot can happen between now and uh, March. Um, the Pirates are in a weird kind of a situation with their rotation, in my view, Richie. They have, they have five starters, and they have a stable rotation, but they don't have a good rotation. I mean, they got through all of this year using only really seven starters, which is really good. But, um, you know, they had a hard time winning 70 games. So, I mean, it's nice to have a stable rotation, but it's better to have an unstable one with one or two guys who are going to win 15 or 18 games. Yeah. And they don't have that. So yeah. a lot of things can happen there. Yeah, they need they need a, a, a another number three kind of guy. Yeah, they need a number one. Well, or yeah. A number but two, which they can't afford, granted. Ex exactly. Or and won't you can't pay for it, however one of those, you want to phrase it. Or trade for one yeah. of those. They, but the, their number one need, in my view, is a starting pitcher. Where uh, that would fall into what, like behind Tyon? Whoever. Whoever. An upgrade from An Williams upgrade and from Cole. all five of them, or uh, at least three of them. Yeah. Right. 
I, I think an upgrade at some point where Trevor Williams is your fifth guy, I think that that's something that the Pirates could do, could afford, could go out and get um, somehow. Mm-hmm. And who knows what a trade from McCutcheon would bring back. You know, maybe a starting pitcher that's a, a three guy and maybe someone that helps in the bullpen, maybe mm-hmm. some minor league prospects. We'll, we'll have to see how this offseason unfolds. Well, we get to take a break. Uh, back with more of your phone calls and some of your tweets coming up next. Stay right there.